Do not, I repeat, do not watch this video if you want to lose weight and keep it off forever. Because in today's video, I'm going to break down the three major mistakes people make when they start their weight loss journey. The three mistakes that people make when they end up gaining the weight back time and time again. I have clients come to me on a weekly basis telling me they've been trying to lose this weight for six, seven, eight, nine months or even years. I've had some clients that have been trying to lose weight for over a decade yet they can't keep the weight off. And I'm telling you right now, these three things are the major contributors to number one, their weight loss to begin with, but the reason, the main reason it comes back every single time is because they do it the wrong way. And today I'm gonna break down these three things. I'm gonna go in depth into each of these three topics. The reason they don't work and the reason they're not sustainable because ultimately you have two choices. Do you want to lose this weight as quickly as possible with a high likelihood of that weight coming back? Or do you want to do things the right way? Do you want to lose this weight and keep it off forever and never, never have to go through the same pain, the same frustration of having to do it time and time again? So with that being said, let's get into the good stuff. Before I dive in, if you could take one moment to follow and or subscribe on whatever platform you're listening, it would mean the absolute world to me. The first mistake people make when starting their weight loss journey is cardio. They immediately, immediately go and start doing cardio. There's a multitude of reasons you should not go straight into doing cardio. If you want to start running and you haven't run in a very long time, chances are you're gonna have a bunch of pain and problems. Most often, people have forgot how to actually run with good form. Yes, there is form and technique involved with running. It is not as easy as just putting some sneakers on and going for a run. This is why people end up having ankle, knee, hip, back pain from just starting their journeys. And most often, it's because they're doing some form of cardio that is not even going to help them lose the weight and keep it off. This is why, number one, I do not ever start clients on cardio. It can be used as a tool. It can be used in the right ways. But most often, people just start doing cardio and expect to just start losing weight. It's not that easy. People don't realize that just doing an hour of cardio doesn't mean you're burning five, six, seven hundred calories like the machines tell you. And that also doesn't mean you can eat five, six, seven hundred calories more on a daily basis. Those machines that tell you how many calories you burn are largely inaccurate. So it's not really going to tell you exactly how many calories you're burning. And you should not use that as a metric of how much more food or how much of a deficit you're actually in. And on top of that, all you're doing with cardio over a long period of time is you're teaching your body to slow down your metabolism. And this may be hard to understand, but I'll do my best to explain. When you do cardio, you are manually burning calories, meaning that when you are burning calories continuously for your body, what it wants to do is slow down the metabolism because you're doing the work for the body. So to keep your body at homeostasis, what it wants to do is slow down your metabolism because it knows you will do the work for them. And the problem with this is that the longer you continue to do this cardio, the slower your metabolism becomes, the more cardio you have to do to continue losing weight, and the worst part is that it's not sustainable. Because unless you absolutely love to run, which I feel like is probably very few of you, the chances are that you're not going to want to do that forever. I always tell people, if you want to lose weight, you need to do it in a way in which you can stick to the methods that you use forever. The goal is not to keep the weight off for a short period of time. The goal is to keep the weight off for the rest of your entire life. And so the habits, the things that you do to get there, need to be part of your life and your lifestyle. And my favorite way of explaining that is if you can't do it for a decade, don't do it for a day. Now, before I tell you what to do instead, I want to share this example with you. So instead of doing tons of cardio, slowing down your metabolism, and beating up your body, 
What I advise you do instead is lift weights. Building muscle and lifting weights is one of the most effective ways to speed up your metabolism, to make your metabolism faster. So instead of manually burning calories every day by doing cardio, by speeding up your metabolism and building muscle, your body will burn the calories for you. So while you're sitting at your desk, while you're sitting on your ass at home watching TV, your body will burn more calories on a daily basis without doing any extra work. I always like to tell people this. Think about it like you have a hole to dig in your backyard, whether it's putting in a pool or a fountain. Do you want to go back there and use a shovel to do every single scoop of dirt and to move it? Or would you rather just have a machine that you push a button, it picks up the dirt and moves it out of the way? Which one would you rather do? I don't know about you, but I think a machine sounds way more enjoyable and fun to me. And that's exactly what lifting weights is. It's the machine. You're building the machine that burns the calories for you. So when you are able to do this effectively, focusing on slowly speeding up your metabolism by slowly increasing the amount of food and calories you're consuming on a daily basis over time, on top of getting stronger in the gym, you'll usually see an uptick in your appetite, which is usually a great sign you're speeding up your metabolism. This, this is what you need to do in order to set yourself up for sustainability, lasting change, so you never have to go back to seeing that weight on your body ever again. And just to reiterate, this does not mean you never need to do cardio. This does not mean cardio isn't great for your heart and has its place. Cardio can be good, can be utilized as a tool on your journey. Personally, for myself and many of my clients, the main thing we focus on is getting movement. So getting seven, eight, nine thousand, maybe even ten thousand steps on a daily basis. That's our form of cardio. Maybe going for a light jog here and there to get some extra movement because you don't have the time to go walk on the treadmill for an hour to get your steps in. That's fine. But if you're constantly just doing cardio to lose weight, you're digging a hole to bury yourself and your metabolism. So that being said, I think I've hammered my message home and I really hope you got a full understanding of my feelings around cardio. I do not hate cardio. I just believe there are better ways to go about weight loss. And if you want to include cardio or you absolutely love to do cardio, by all means, go for it. This isn't for you if you're someone that loves cardio. But what I want you to know is that if you can't stick to it forever, don't even start doing it. Now let's move on to the second mistake people make, and that is restrictive diets. One of the big, big, big mistakes people make is they label foods. They label this bad. They label that good. And when you start to label foods good and bad, Number one, you're creating very poor relationships with food. Every food should be able to be enjoyed in moderation. And when you are super restrictive and cut entire food groups or foods out of your diet, you're more likely to end up binging on them when your craving gets too strong for you to handle, when your habits get out of control, or your family comes to town and sets a box of cookies on your countertop. You're not going to be able to control yourself. And I've seen this so many times, and that's why I'm able to say this with such confidence. And I want you to know restrictive diets are not the answer. You need to have freedom in your food. You need to have that flexibility. That's exactly why I'm telling you to speed up your metabolism with lifting weights. But going back to what I'm saying, if you can't stick to it for a decade, don't do it for a day. And that's why I say do not cut out cookies from your life because you're going to be mad. You're going to be upset when you're at a party with your family. You're having a great conversation. Some cookies go in front of you and they're like, hey, do you want a cookie? Well, what's going to happen? You're going to say no. The people around you will be like, why? Why can't you eat a cookie? And they're going to start pressuring you. It's going to be an uncomfortable position to be in. And trust me, I've been there before. That used to be me. Now I'll have the cookie. 
And the reason I'm able to do that is because I've set myself up for success. And I'm not going to go eat 10, 15, 20 cookies. I'm just going to have that one because I know I will enjoy it. I'll get the value of it. I'll be able to enjoy this social environment, which is way more important to me than just a silly cookie that's going to give me some calories. At the end of the day, I will enjoy things in moderation, but I'm not going to go eat like an asshole in order to satisfy this craving. So instead of sticking to some restrictive diet that's not sustainable, you need to aim for a sustainable approach. Having the approach of, okay, I'm not going to eat cookies every day, but you know what? When I want one, I'm going to have one. When my cravings are low, when I just have a little bit of that craving coming on, Uh, I heard someone talk about this recently where he explained that kill your cravings when they're at a three out of 10. When you feel this craving coming on, go enjoy a bite of a cookie or go enjoy one cookie. But if you wait till the craving gets to a 10 out of 10, you're going to go crush a whole sleeve of Girl Scout cookies. And then you're going to be so frustrated with yourself after because you're going to be so mad that you just did that. You just set yourself backwards. And that's exactly why we can't label those things as bad. The bad thing was the mistake you made of restricting yourself for too long. This is why I try to avoid restriction of the things that you love or the things that you enjoy. Have those foods, but eat them in moderation. Know when that craving comes on, go have one. Do it right away. But if you postpone it, you wait and you wait and you wait, you're just setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up for a binge and I'm sure, I'm sure that is not what you're looking to accomplish. So if you want to aim for sustainability, aim for something you can stick to. Aim for an amount of calories you can consume on a daily basis. Aim for something you can actually stick to for life. Now, if in order for you to lose weight, you have to cut your calories extremely low, This tells me you're not ready for a diet. You're not ready to go into a deficit. This tells me we should probably go back to the first thing I explained to you, which is speeding up your metabolism, building muscle, increasing the amount of food you eat. So when you cut back, you're not having to go so low in calories that your only food options are chicken and rice. That's not fun. That's not enjoyable. And that's not sustainable. Again, this video, I'm here to explain to you the only way to get to where you want to be and actually stay there is doing it the right way. Or you're going to continue spinning your wheels, going in circles, gaining and losing and gaining and losing the weight over and over and over again, which I know for a fact you do not want. It may be great and fun to get in a bikini after you lose all this weight, but what fun is it just to have the weight come back. Not fun at all. And for the third mistake people make is trying to find some sort of shortcut. There's probably a hundred different gurus on Instagram, Facebook, and all those apps that are trying to push some new secret or some fad diet or something that your friend Carol or Sherry's doing or your friend Bob and Fred are trying to do. It's all of these things that are shortcuts. They're trying to give you the cheat code, the fastest route to success. Everyone will rave about these amazing things because, oh, you know, I lost 10 pounds doing this for three weeks or I I did a fast for 24 hours and lost 10 pounds. That's just water weight. Ultimately, what I'm telling you is there are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts in life, and there are no shortcuts on your weight loss journey. And funny enough, the longer it takes for you to get to your goals, the longer you'll actually keep the results. So what's the rush? Let's just say it's taken 30, 40, 50 years to get to where you are today. So why are you trying to undo 40 years of bad habits in one month, three months, or even six months. I think it's important to understand this is going to be a journey. It's going to take time. If you've been this weight for the last 10 years, you think you can undo all of that in six months? Probably not. 
there's a lot of subconscious and mindsets and habits and behaviors you need to shift and learn to change over time in order to get to a place where you can actually keep the weight off. I like to explain to people, it's not about the things you need to do. It's about the person you need to become. Who do you need to become in order to lose this weight? Who is the person that's 30 pounds lighter? Who is the version of you that's 30 pounds lighter? What does that person do on a daily basis? What are their habits? What's their lifestyle like? How happy are they? What's their confidence like? How do their clothes fit? What are they doing every day to continue on this path? And if you can't stick to those things that they're thinking of, number one, you probably have a skewed perspective of what it really takes to be that way. Or number two, you just need to actually learn what it actually takes to get there. At the end of the day, you need to prepare yourself for a long journey. I know that's not what you came here to hear. I know that is not fun and exciting or at all what you wanted to hear. But to be honest, sustainable weight loss, the results you can actually keep, it's kind of boring. It's kind of boring of a process. But at the end of the day, if you do it right, you'll never, never have to go through it again. Or you can do the shortcuts your friend Bobby was doing. You can do the methods your friend Sherry was doing and ultimately lose the weight and continue to gain it back over and over again. So maybe for a few days you look good. You look good in that dress or you look good in that t-shirt. For what? What's the point if it comes back? It's not going to be enjoyable. It's not going to satisfy you. And it's just going to be a temporary reward for the little bit of work you put in. And then it's just going to come all back. So to recap what I went over, instead of doing cardio, lift some weights. Instead of restrictive diets, seek sustainability. Remember, if you can't do it for a decade, don't do it for a day. And stop looking for shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. Plan for a long journey. Plan for this to take two years and do it one. Plan for this to take a year. It may happen in six months. But if you do it wrong, you do all the cardio, you do all the restrictive diets, all you're going to do is set yourself up for failure. And I want you to know, if that is you, or you have done those things in the past, you're not alone. 95% of the people that come to me have done the same thing. They've gone down the same path. They've experienced the same things as you. They've made the same mistakes as you. And I know how frustrating it is because I did the same thing when I started my weight loss journey. I was so fed up and frustrated because when I got to my goal, I was so happy with what I saw in the mirror just to have it come back a few months later. And it felt like I did all of this work for nothing. It discouraged me. It made me almost want to quit. And that actually inspired me to teach other people. I wanted to prevent other people from experiencing the same pain, the same frustration I had. I didn't want other people to go down the same wrong path over and over again. I didn't want people to be so upset with themselves and to stop and give up because ultimately you and I both know our lives are going to be so much more enjoyable when we're healthy. And the only way to do that is in it with a sustainable approach. And that's exactly what we do with our clients. We take a very specific four-step approach of helping you build amazing habits, helping you speed up your metabolism so you don't have to cut out all of the foods you love. And so when you go into the deficit in step three, you can lose the weight you want to get rid of, still have the foods you love, still go on those date nights, still have those social events with your friends and family. And ultimately, in the last step of our program, we help people learn the exact things they need to do so they never need another coach or program ever again. So if that's something you're interested in, you need help, you need the guidance, you want that accountability from a coach that's going to help you one-on-one, -on -one, guide you through every step, every behavior change, every moment on your journey, you'll have that support. If that's something that you want, if that's something that you need, go ahead, go to the bio, check out our website if you want to learn more, 
or just click the strategy call, book a call with me. We can hop on a phone call. We can talk about your goals, see if we're a good fit to work together, and we can take it from there. I really look forward to connecting with you. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. I hope you found a ton of value in today's video, and I cannot wait for you to see the next one. Peace.